Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of all tribes, nations, and all over the kingdom of God and looking towards the kingdom of God. My greetings to you in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you once again for tuning in. Wherever you are in this world, I give you, I bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Today I just want to talk to you about a a very different topic comparative to last time I talked talk to you about the soul and the spirit. Today I just want to, to elaborate on that and just pay attention to what I am saying because these things matter a lot about what we are going to understand and it opens up our minds as the psalmist in 119, Psalm 119, he says, open my eyes to your word, Lord. So the more you get interested in the word of God, the more your eyes and outlook will be open. And the more you understand the truth. And as Jesus says, when you understand, when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. I just want to talk to, about, talk to you about something which is very deep and what Jesus wanted to explain in Matthew 10. If you go to Matthew 10 in, in your books, he is explaining about the fear. He says, do not fear for your body. There is one who can kill the body, but cannot kill, kill the soul. But fear who, him who can kill both the body and the soul. That is, he is talking about himself. That fear the Lord, so who can keep your soul and give life to your soul also and to your body also. And when, as in Paul, in very nicely in Romans 8, 11, he says, is, it is the same spirit we have. It is the same spirit we have which raised Jesus from the dead. And that same spirit will give life to us in our mortal bodies. That same spirit will give life to our mortal, mortal bodies so that no disease, no problem, no sickness, no tension, no difficulty can touch us when the spirit is in us which picked up, which took Jesus to his heavenly father. And if you remember very clearly when the three crosses, when we were discussing the three crosses, there is a time when Jesus is in um, in conversation with one of the thieves and one of the thieves is saying very clearly that if you can save your uh, soul, well, why don't you save yourself? The other one says, remember me. When you in, come into your kingdom, remember me. And Jesus tells him a wonderful thing and very clear thing that today you will be with me in paradise. I stress on the today. That is Good Friday. That Good Friday, you will be with me in spirit in paradise. So the spirit of Jesus and the spirit of the thief, they were attached to the heavenly kingdom in kingdom on Friday. On Good Friday, we celebrate when Jesus said, my, I give my spirit to you, Lord. My spirit is yours. I give my spirit. And he took the thief's spirit also with him. Right? Am I right? So when the spirit is with Jesus, so we as Christians sometimes keep on lingering on to Good Friday and asking for forgiveness and this and this and this. But remember when he gave his blood and his he was beaten and bruised and in Isaiah 53 says he was not even looking like a human. He was not like a human. He was such as... Uh, uh, totally bloodied body he was not looking at a like a human but he bore our sins and the blood which was given that forgive our sins so we do not have to keep sitting at the cross all the time asking for forgiveness because in jeremiah 31 he says i remember your sins no more when the lord says i remember your sins no more that means we also, as well as Christians, when we pray, we always say, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
so we also should not remember other people's who people who have wronged us or uh, done something wrong to us forgive them and forget them and keep on moving your life towards the other thing go to from friday go to saturday and when saturday comes the spirit is with the lord remember jesus spirit and the thief spirit is with the lord and we come into saturday saturday is a time where you give thanks to the lord for making holding your hand while will while you are on the cross saturday is a time of rejoicing and thanking god and for his great giving a gratitude to the lord that he helped you through walk through the valley of death he walked may he walk through the valley of death the lord was with you and he walked with you through the valley of death in your difficult times in your times of diseases in time of your problems in times of your difficulties in whatever problem you and i have everything everybody has a problem understand this everybody has a problem and we give thanks to god for walking through us, with us through that problem and bringing us to sunday the easter when the grave was empty the grave was empty because he was risen that spirit which had gone on friday to the heaven came back into the same body and he walked out of the grave he didn't walk out of the grave because he wanted to show people that he can walk he walked out of the grave because we could see me and you can understand that he he was dead he lives he lives with us and that is what we have to believe that if you are stuck at good friday and you don't go into saturday and the final is acclamation and the, your belief that he is not in the grave the grave was left open purposely to for me and you to walk in and see that he who had promised that i will come out after 3 days he walked out of the grave so that he could be with us and that is when he says i will send you a helper which is the holy spirit which will guide you and whatever it takes from me it will give you i have a very interesting interesting analogy if you remember in john 2 or 3 somewhere where he turns water into wine many people take it in different ways but it is a very uh, meaningful thing he says fill up six jugs now six is the ma- number of humanity he six fills fill up six jugs of water and when they fill up with water the word of water of word he says with water and he turns it into wine and jesus and mary says one thing to the servants he, she is saying to me and to you who are watching and who proclaim to be christian she, she is still saying the same thing do as he says do as he says and when up when you fill up your souls with the water of life that is the word of god in isaiah 55 he says you who are thirsty why do you want to why do you want to earn the bread which does not satisfy come to me i will give freely i will give you freely water and that is why jesus says in john out of your belly will come rivers of life out of your belly will flow rivers of life and that is we need to fill our souls our spirits with the word of god the spirit he is interested in mine and your spirit more than anything else he wants us to keep his spirit in you so that he can guide us lead us and the when the uh, soul is filled with the word of the uh, with water with water with his words and everything he can guide you lead you protect you bless you and do everything literally everything for you that is why he say yahweh sabath means he will fight he is the commander of the heavenly armies he can he can fight your battles for you and i don't want to stress this much but i can tell you one thing 
I have fought so many battles in my life till this day, sitting, just praying, my children's battles my, at university, at schools, at this and this and any places. I have fought, fought those battles without moving out of my house, just praying to him. Just praying to him, I have fought those battles and we have always come out victorious. And that is his promise that victory is his. Victory is his because he has conquered the grave. He came out of the grave and he can give sense and order to our lives also. The, the thing I want to encourage you is, the thing is, when you read the Bible, read it diligently and try to understand that how things are working and see how he turned Paul, who was who was the quite a knowledgeable person, but his priorities were different. He was killing Christians. He was doing this, 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 this. But with one encounter with Jesus, he said, why are you persecuting me? He changed his life and he became such a blessing to the, uh, us Christians that this is the biggest example we can have. And in our lives, we I need to tell you, there are times and seasons when you are daily thankful for the cross. Thank you. We give him thanks for taking our burdens on the cross and kneeling to them cross. But move on to Saturday. Thank him for walking with you through your problems, difficulties, and rejoice with him on, good, uh, on Easter time that he came out of the grave just to for me and you so that he can say the thief comes the thief he is a roaring lion the devil is a roaring lion he comes to steal kill and destroy your thoughts he came comes and steals and steals your peace and once your peace is stolen the next things always follow he says the thief comes to steal, steal, kill and destroy. But I have come to give you abundant life. And his promises, he can never lie. You know that. A good God can never lie. And when he becomes the anchor of your souls, and when he becomes the anchor of your souls, things change. Life changes, I tell you. Life is more enjoyable. He wants to have, he wants his children, his sons, his sons who are, as in John, John 1, he says is, those who received him in their hearts and those who believed that he came out of the grave, he gave them the privilege of being called the sons of God. He is, you and me are the children of God who know his word. When, you, when the word resides in your soul and you can always say whenever the devil tries to attack you or uh, cause fear into your hearts or pro gives you problem or difficulties or anything in the mind, always start with this thing as Jesus said in John 4 and in Luke 4, it is written. And when you know what it is written, you can speak what it is written. Because he fulfilled all the prophecies and he still fulfills all those prophecies in you and me. That is the word becomes flesh in us. That is what I want to stress to you. And that is I want to encourage you to go read the Bible. Take up some Psalm, Psalm 12, 112, Psalm 1, Psalm 13, Psalm 24, Psalm 25, anything and Absorb it in your body. Soak it up in your body. Because when the devil attacks, the Holy Spirit, which is the helper, will guide you to say it is written. When, and when you say it is written to the devil, he will go away, I tell you. You can't fight him. You can't fight him. But the Holy Spirit has the power. The Spirit has the power. As Jesus says in and in Isaiah 30, uh, 33, verse 13, he says, Those who are near to me, those who are far away, let them know of my power. But those who are near to me, you and me, we who, we, we who call ourselves Christians, we wear the cross, we 
pray day and night we say we are very close to him he says those who are close to me understand my power the power behind all powers we say that is the power of jesus christ he controls the earth he controls the earth and he has made us he has made us human beings for the display of his power he wants to show his power in you you remember the 12 apostles they were uneducated men we are a little bit educated comparatively but see what they did that we are remembering those uneducated people despite our increase in knowledge and so much in uh, technology and everything but still what they did and what they did for christianity that is why we sit here today that is why we sit here today so remember this children children of god that you have to soak up the word in your spirits once your spirits are full the water is full he will turn all your waters into wine all your waters into wine think about this and i encourage you to share this message and to put it into practice put it into practice don't just listen to it put it into practice that not this thing be just music to your ears that you are listening something good and then you just forget it put it into practice so that your life may be turned into rejoicing and a wonderful time of on this earth let's pray gracious father we thank you for this time and thank you for your word and thank you for the seed which has been scattered father lord bless that it may bring in more souls and your kingdom as it is in heaven may be on earth also i pray in this the name of the lord and savior of this world jesus christ may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord make his face shine upon you may the lord be gracious to you may the lord lift up your chins and give you his peace shalom shalom and shalom amen